The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats, so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish... They had seized, had seized him, and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. They were brought, when they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. These readings are um, kind of interesting readings where we see the common theme in all of these where, um, where Isaiah is called, called to serve God. And then Paul is called. Paul is called as well, a sinner. And uh, Simon Peter is also called, calling to serve God our Lord Jesus, and to dedicate their lives to God. And, uh, and in this, we have uh, the great calling of God. And to remind ourselves that we, too, are called. We're called to serve God. You know, that holiness is not just reserved for those who are priests and religious. We're all called towards holiness. We're all called to serve Him. But it kind of begs the question, why on earth would anybody do such a thing? Why would anybody serve God? Right? Uh, by the world's standards, it just seems like a crazy thing to do. I mean, God's the one that spoils all the fun, isn't he? But when we see here, we see here it also not just God's calling, but we see the holiness of God which is the very motivation force. This is the why. What were they experiencing? It sounds kind of strange to us to see Simon Peter going from a great catch of fish to saying, I will serve you. What's the connection? I mean, why would a great catch of fish? Look, I had the biggest fish ever. I had him. You can hear the fishing story, right? The biggest fish ever. And he got away, right? The got away story. But he catches it this time. Right? Ah, the whale of a fish. Well, that's great. You think of a, <laughs> the, the stories that go around, it would be a miracle. But in this, in, this, in, in this encounter with God, Simon Peter has this experience with God. What is it that happened? What is it that happened? Okay, it's a great catch of fish. But what happened, really? I mean, it's got to be something more. First of all, it was a miracle. We don't think and we don't stop and appreciate the miracle that happened there. Look, it was one catch out of one net that was able to almost sink 
two boats, one catch of one net, almost sinking two boats. So there's an obvious miracle, even like the greatest catch in the world. Even far blows the doors off of that, that anybody would be able to look at and say, look, that's a miracle. This is not something normal going on. This isn't just the best catch ever. This is God doing his work. And so God went overboard and like saying, showing, showing his goodness. And Peter, being a true fisherman, realizes this and realizes the greatness of God. He realizes the greatness of God and the mercy of the God and the goodness of God. There's something communicated to Peter in this event that we don't get. Because he responds something that to our ears in what we just simply see, it seems like going way overboard. Depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Why would a great catch of fish evoke such a response from Peter? And I would say it kind of goes back as this first reading from the book of Isaiah. The events and the responses are very similar. They kind of go together. and That's why they, they have these readings, these two readings of the same weekend. And so when you see Isaiah, Isaiah is having a vision, and he sees the heaven and all the angels of the seraphim praising God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. We kind of understand it a little bit more. But there's even something more here that cannot be communicated, that words cannot say, and so they give this response. Holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory, and the house shakes with the glory of God. And Isaiah, in experiencing this glory, he says and he responds, Woe is me, I am doomed. And it's not about a lightning bolt, like God is so powerful, the all-powerful, the almighty God would, can hit us with a lightning bolt, squash us like a grape. This is the all-powerful God, I, I am so afraid. That's not what he's responding to. Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips. He is experiencing the purity and the goodness of God. He knows the goodness of God. He sees this as a reality. And he knows his own sinfulness of how he offends God and how he would be justly condemned if God ever chose to do so. Yet God doesn't. God does not choose to condemn Isaiah. Now get this. This is in the Old Testament. You see how the Old Testament complements the New Testament. The New Testament complements the Old Testament. They go together. It's the same Word of God. And it's the same God. God rather sends His angel to Isaiah to purify his lips and his soul. For his sins have been purged. God forgives them of his sins so that he could be sent out to do the holy will of God. And so in this event, God reveals himself as he truly is. How do you know a person? By what they do. It is their character, what they do, that we know. And we start to discover who a person is. The Father sends his only begotten Son to come and save us. Jesus himself says yes and sacrifices his very self to us. The Holy Spirit comes to us and lives and dwells in us by virtue of our baptism and is renewed in us in this most holy Eucharist. God indeed reveals himself. And Isaiah is, woe is me, I am doomed. 
I am not worthy of the holiness of God. God's holiness is now defined, not just by the strength of his arm, by his power, because God, by his power, just being God, is holy. Whether he would condemn us or not, God is holy. He is the all-powerful, the almighty God. He is utterly holy, and we are utterly not worthy. And yet God chooses in his character, revealing himself to us. He chooses mercy. He chooses kindness. He chooses to purify sinners and to offer us all the graces in this life. And so we start to see the experience of what Peter experienced as he is in this boat, realizing God's mercy, realizing how God defines holiness in his mercy. So now we start to see the character of God, his very being that defines his holiness. How holy he is. And how by his holiness we are made holy. Not by ourselves, but by the holiness of God. God would come down to us. And so Simon Peter says, depart from me. For I am a sinful man. I am not worthy to serve you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus says, do not be afraid. And he purifies our hearts and our souls by giving us the sacraments, by giving us that great sacrament of confession to be healed of our sins, to be forgiven and purged of all of that, and then renew us every time we receive him in this most holy Eucharist. Such is the holiness of God, how he defines his holiness as coming to us day in and day out week in and week out, renewing that holy and sacred temple of God, still choosing to live within each and every one of us. Yes, he is holy. He is good. And he constantly reveals himself to us. And so he calls each and every one of us to serve him, to adore him, and to bring others to people that they do may know of his goodness, of his holiness that he is so pure and good, never willing evil for us, but always desiring what is good and holy. What an awesome gift it is, and what an awesome gift it is to have people who are called, who are called to religious life, who are called to the priesthood. Those who have been forgiven much, love much. And so we see Paul, Paul in the second reading, how he had this major conversion and he trusted God. He abandoned himself to God knowing in the depths of his soul his goodness, knowing his mercy so deeply because he has truly experienced his unworthiness. Our God is so good and he calls us each and every day. And he still is so eager to enter into our souls and our bodies, that he would give us priests and make himself present in this Eucharist this very day to strengthen us and to give us all the graces he desires to give us. Our God is truly holy. And how good it is to enter into this act of worship, praising and doing what the angels do, shouting out from our deepest souls, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. 